Hello and welcome back to another Rome Remastered Historical Battle walkthrough. Today we are once again playing in the Alexander Expansion. In today's video we are playing the Historical Battle of Gaugamela. Darius fled the wreck at Isus, heading east for the river Euphrates. And so Alexander resumed his strategy of capturing the coastal cities of the eastern Mediterranean. As the Macedonians headed south towards Egypt in 332 BC, they accepted the surrender of several Phoenician cities, including Damascus. The well-defended island city of Tyre did offer some resistance, but eventually fell when a mole was constructed to link it to the mainland. Angered by the Tyrians' defiance, Alexander had 8,000 of them killed and over 30,000 sold into slavery. A similar fate also befell the residents of Gaza, and in the face of such examples, any further opposition crumbled. The Egyptians had never been willing Persian subjects, and they welcomed Alexander, who in turn offered tribute to their gods. Alexander then traveled to visit the oracle at Siwa, who confirmed him as the son of Zeus. In securing Egypt, Alexander completed the capture of the entire eastern Mediterranean coast and in 331 BC was free to push on into Asia in pursuit of Darius. But the Persian king had been gathering another huge army to his banner and was moving to block the Macedonians near the river Tigris. Alexander captured several of the Persian advance guard and was astonished to hear that the Persian army consisted of over a million men. Calling on the formidable resources of his vast kingdom, Darius had also summoned scythed chariots, elephants, and some 40,000 cavalry. He had also learned the painful lessons from Isis and set about deploying his troops near the village of Gorgamela on a wide plain where he could fully exploit the advantage in numbers. Undaunted as ever, Alexander marched with his men through the night to attack on the morning of October the 1st, 331 BC. Alright, so at first glance this seems like it's going to be a very difficult battle. I mean, just looking at what we have, we have uh, a single army, which isn't too bad. We have our powerful phalanx units and cavalry. But then we look at the Persians, and although they have very weak units, they have a lot of them. Now, luckily for us, the other two reinforcing armies have a lot fewer units, so it's not as much as it looked like it could be. And although it looks like it's going to be a difficult battle, and it actually is going to be a difficult battle, I'm going to show you how to have an easier time with winning this. So, let's begin! It is 331 BC. Alexander's campaign against the Persian Empire is now in its third year and has brought the young king many victories. Alexander continues to lead his army deep into unfamiliar Middle Eastern territory. He is still only 25 years old. His scouts have brought him reports of a Persian force close by. is King Darius, out to avenge his defeat at Isis. He has gathered around him a larger army than Alexander has ever faced before, comprised of troops from all corners of the Persian Empire. Darius has deployed his army across a wide plain and has specially flattened the field of engagement to create ideal terrain for his champions. Darius has lured Alexander to his chosen battle. His army far outnumbers Alexander's. The odds would appear to be stacked against the young pretender. But Alexander is confident. He knows his troops are superior. He has a plan to exploit the weaknesses of both the Persian army and its command. Alexander suspects that Darius lacks personal courage and knows that the superstitious Persian troops are unlikely to continue to fight on without their king. 
If Alexander can chase Darius into flight, as he did at Isis, the Persian army will likely fall into disarray. However, Darius is heavily guarded, and it will be difficult to break through to him. Alexander must outmaneuver or break through Darius's battle line in order to get to the king. Should he fail to rout Darius, the Persian army will march forward at full strength and engulf the Macedonians. All right, so as you can see, this is not going to be a pleasant battle. We are outnumbered by a lot of troops. And although we have superior troops, we are also going to be outflanked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the enemy units to their disadvantage. What you can see is that the enemy has one unit of elephants, and we happen to have one unit of archers. So what we're going to do is as soon as they get in range, we're going to turn on uh, flaming arrows, which will make the elephants uh, become scared and go berserk. And if that's done successfully, they may actually start running through the Persian lines, greatly weakening them. So that's going to be a big goal for us. But we also have to use our cavalry. What we're going to do is we're going to try and flank around to hit Darius and take out his cavalry troops, which could be a big threat and outflank our infantry. Finally, we'll use our infantry and the rest of our cavalry to clean up and take out the remaining of this weak infantry force. So let's begin. So first I'm going to start off by making the line slightly longer. I don't want it to be too long so that we don't get uh, crippled very easily. But I don't want it to be too short so we don't get outflanked and stuck. Now I'm going to have our hypaspists uh, close by so they can assist with holding the infantry down. I'm going to turn off uh, skirmishing mode with running away and fire at will because that could be very hurtful because they could use precious ammunition. Units. Units. Now I want to be careful, we don't want to get pinned down by their heavy chariots. Those could be a big, big problem for us. Hmm, it's not as long as I'd like it. Looks like we're gonna have to go really, really thin. What would be ideal is to split up the enemy forces, so by going this close they might feel threatened and split up their formation, which would be ideal for us. Please be in range, almost. I'm gonna change to flaming arrows and get ready. Oh, so close. Come on, just hold on. Almost there. Alright, give it all you got. Come on, break them. Come on. Alright, so now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to weaken out the left and right flanks of the enemy units by using our cavalry to counter, of course, their cavalry. Um, but I don't want to get pinned down because they have a lot more troops than we do, and we don't want to mess with that. Oh, they're still not breaking. If we could just get these elephants to go berserk, it would go perfectly. Oh, I don't want to get hit in the back. We're going to have to split up our cavalry, unfortunately. And the enemy is still holding strong, which is not very good for us. Oh, they're so weak. Make them rout. Kill them all. 
And only if these elephants would start routing, going berserk, anything. I'm gonna have to start pulling out the cavalry. We're having a real issue there. I want to conserve the lives of my cavalry because although we need to distract the enemy, although we need to distract the enemy, we also need to be able to fight them properly. And of course, we can't do that if we don't have any men. I'm going to take the strike at Darius. Well, it looks like we. Oh no! Not now! Don't go berserk now! Okay. Perfect, perfect, okay. Turn off flaming shot, and now we're just going to target their forces and allowing the berserk units to go fight them. Oh no. Okay, now what we've done, I'm going to go in half speed so you can see closely. As you can see, by them going into berserk mode, they're very easily just running through the Persian lines, killing their own men, which is very beneficial for us. Uh, I don't want to be outflanked, so I'm going to try and fight that. And if we could kill Darius now, this would be perfect. And he's routing! Oh, just please don't get hit. Okay, good. We didn't get stuck at them. If we could only kill Darius, this would be perfect. He's the last one. Come on. Let's see. We're taking casualties trying to kill him. This isn't good. I think we should just let him go. I'm going to tell this unit to back off. Alright, we're, we're now going to come back to our main force and assist. As you can see, when actually fighting our infantry forces, we can hold out very well against them. But because we're so thin, we're going to have trouble. You know what, I'm going to leave Darius, because as you can see, this is just a mistake. We're just losing men, and not helping our own men. And that's not what we want or need. And that elephant is still going berserk and doing so much beautiful, beautiful damage. Beautiful. Just don't let that elephant hurt us, and we'll be fine. So as you can see, the tide has kind of turned. We've lost a little bit of our forces, mainly our cavalry, but we're still holding quite strong. Oh no. You never want your cavalry engaging chariots. It's just a big mistake. As you, can, as you saw with Darius, we lost a lot of good men just trying to chase him down even though he wasn't really fighting us. Right, I'm going to assist my men. There we go. Okay. You two can get back in formation. Cavalry can chase them down. And sometimes it's okay to go after chariots with your cavalry if it's absolutely necessary, but I try to avoid it with as much as I can because, as you can see, it's just devastating on your unit. I'm just trying to locate where the enemy cavalry went. Oh, there they are. I haven't seen them in a while. Seem to be inactive. Let's zoom in on that. How are they doing? Not ideal. Very not ideal. Alright, now that we've held off the brute of their army, uh, it's just time to pick them off. I'll locate where all of my troops are, and then we can begin going for the final push to kill everyone off. So I'm going to continue running away from these chariots just to distract them so they don't bother my front line. And I am going to start 
doing something with our, my main infantry force so we can finally kill them all off. I'm worried about that elephant there. I want to take out the enemy cavalry. You know what? Kill these chariots. I need you back. I want my cavalry to start resting up because they've been doing a lot of work for us. That's good. We're gonna start having them come back, but also make sure the Persians don't come back. But now the battle should be quite easy because with is if Darius is gone, I can't tell at this point. I've been too busy with the battle, but if he's gone, then they're going to be routing a lot faster. And since we killed one of their other generals, since they had three generals in this battle. One of them still alive over there. Uh, it's given us a great advantage. So actually, now I'm going to just speed up the time and let my cavalry rest while my infantry does all the work. is routing. Don't like having that gap there, but we're just gonna have to deal with it. I'm fine with losing that unit. We've basically won at this point. I'm not too worried about those casualties. Although it would have been nice to keep them around. Uh, I'm going to go take out their final unit before going to the cavalry. And as you can see, we are very effective. We killed a lot of them with minimal casualties during the first main engagement. And that elephant is still going berserk, which is why you need to try and make it go berserk as early on as possible. Perfect. I just want to chase them down. And as you can see, that's basically 15 minutes and the battle is over. So I think we did very, very well. I'm going to end the battle here because there's no point in continuing to chase them down. This is a glorious achievement. Your victory is total. Would be a better word. So although we were outnumbered, they had double the size of the enemy army. We still crushed them. We killed one of their generals, routed the entire enemy army, and we can continue advancing on the campaign map. Unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't get to kill Darius because as you saw, I had to just leave him alone. He was surprisingly killing all my men, but it was still a pretty good outcome. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope it was helpful as well. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you watching again next time. Have a good day.